Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's Talk Tales with Chris Phillips. On today's show from the Las Vegas Sun, John Katzlamidis and his co-host on their weekly radio show, Trish McCrone. And now a man whose pillowcases are made from Crown Royal Velvet Bags, Mr. Chris Phillips! Hey. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the biggest, craziest 24-hour-a-day party in the world. And I'm not talking about Vegas, I'm talking about my house over the last three days. But uh, we are, I'm, I'm actually quite lucky I'm here today. I've lost my voice, but I think we're going to get through it, and I think that tells you what kind of weekend I had, as usual. And I think out of 18 episodes that we have now done here on the Vegas Video Network, this will be the first episode in which I'm going to try to stay sober. <laughs> in lieu of my guest and out of respect for him today. Folks, guess what? You are watching the wildly popular Talk Tales, and I am Chris Phillips. And as you know, this is, this is without question my favorite hour of the entire week because we have a chance to sit down, uh, pretend to have a cocktail or two, <laughs> and get to speak with some of the people who truly make this the uh, entertainment capital of the world, the, the greatest place to live. Uh, I couldn't be more happy to be here. I've been here five years now, and, and over that time, I've come to learn that the true spirit of Las Vegas is, in fact, the people who live here, work here, and make this city tick. And uh, before we get started today with our, our guests that we have, which I'm so excited to have, because they're not only uh, very talented, important people that are, make up the fabric of this community, but they're also dear friends of mine. But like I said, before we get to them, I'd like to let you know that if you want to Chime in, comment, give us a suggestion at any time through the week. Please feel free to contact us at TalkTales at VegasVideoNetwork.com. You could also call our toll-free number in case you were like me and don't have a computer. And that number is 866-966-4599. And if you are watching us live right now, remember that we would encourage you highly to chime in with any kind of questions you have in our live chat room uh, but as I said, Scott, this weekend I think I have finally done myself in. Uh, <laughs> because not only did we have our show at Red Rock, we got to do the coolest thing on Saturday. Um, I know this is probably true to your heart, Scott, because I know you were part of this great family of people. But we got to perform at the uh, Grand Ballroom at the Bellagio for 1,800 of the most amazing people who in fact make up some of the most brave people that live here in Vegas. And they are the men and women of the United States Air Force. And so <laughs> we, did the, uh, we did the Air Force Ball uh, Saturday night, and we had the time of our lives. And I've come to learn that, the, uh, like I said, these amazing, brave young men and women, they know how to drink, too. <laughs> <laughs> that, My God, could they party? That's why I joined. Jeez. These people didn't <laughs> stop. I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. But we, we wanted to thank them. They're, they're truly... Uh, uh, you know, they make us very proud to uh, be entertainers, to be able to have moments like that, to get to share some time with them. But like I said, I've been here about five years from Arizona, and during that time, I have come to learn that this city, uh, to some degree, uh, makes up its mind, so to speak, as to what to do, where to go, and how to think, based on just a handful of journalists in this town that have columns uh, and write articles in town that... Uh, Truly, I kind of, I guess, kind of persuade people like me as to what they're going to do when they go out, be it uh, reviewing a show or giving a comments on a new restaurant and whatnot. And today we have a couple guests with us who certainly dictate uh, where and how and what this city thinks. Uh, when we come back from the break, folks, we are so proud to have with me uh, one of the uh, more commonly known names in journalism here in town. It's John... Kasselaminis, otherwise known as John Katz here in town, uh, who writes a daily blog called The Katz Report in the Las Vegas Sun. He also is a co-host with our dear friend, Trisha McCrone, who uh, they have this, themselves a wildly popular radio show on 91.5 uh, FM. It's called Katz with the Dish. We're going to be talking with both of them as soon as we come back. We'll see you in just a minute. You're watching Talk Tales on the Vegas Video Network. <laughs> 
Livestream is your premier place to watch live events on the web, mobile devices, and connected TVs. See new events daily or broadcast your own at Livestream.com. Livestream. Be there. Hey, we're back, everybody. And uh, this brings me tremendous pride uh, to be sitting next to somebody who, I guess you would say we're drinking buddies uh, a couple times a week. That. I guess you could say that, except <laughs> for the fact that I'm drinking for both of us. Right. <laughs> right. Folks, uh, once again, from the Las Vegas Sun, we have John, as known here in the Valley, John Katz. Right. Uh, we couldn't be more proud to have you. Right on. I'm known in my family as John Katz. So I can imagine you are, because nobody in the world can pronounce it even Katsalomidis. Katsalomidis. Yes. I'm, I'm guessing that is from Greek heritage. It is Greek indeed, yes, sir. Are, you have, you have, are they from Greece? Mm -hmm. or? My father's uh, third generation Greek, I think. Yes, and uh, we hail from Sparta, outside of Sparta. Half my family, my father's side, and I'm half Italian, too. I'm Greek and Italian. Oh. So my dad's Greek. That's why the name's Greek. Well, I... I I'm half Greek, half Italian, and all that. I can imagine so. I'd be very proud to have mythology in my past of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> you have mythology in your present. <laughs> well, folks, if you are not familiar ah, with uh, Mr. Katz, or if you do not live in Las Vegas, this man, for the most part, uh, tells our fair city what and how to think. Wow, so to speak. do I you, really? You're one of the three or four. No wonder we're in a recession. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're truly one of the three or four uh, journalists in town who I think everybody goes to as to uh, form or formulate an opinion as to what's hot, what's not, what's going on in the city. Uh, not only because you have a tremendous viewpoint on subject matter, but you also put your own personal spin yeah. as to your opinions on to uh, how things are shaping up. Now, you've right, obviously been writing here in town for several years. Since 1996. Since 1996. I you broke the story that Zoe Boy was coming to Red Rock. I was the first one to write about you guys. Were you really? Yeah, I was, honestly. I, I remember when we talked that. to you, when I talked to you and. Uh, Marley, yes. um, <laughs> when you were in Scottsdale, you were in right. Scottsdale on the phone, and I talked. To, I think I just talked to you, and she was. Uh, she, she came in later, but then I met you in person when uh, Red Rock opened. Well, what an interesting profession yeah. to get into. Obviously, now it's all I, I know you, circles, you're yeah. you're from Idaho. Originally from Idaho, and I yeah. spent a lot of time in Northern California. Northern California, you were a sports yeah. writer too. Mm -hmm. out there, I was a sports too. writer for but quite how, a while. Yeah. How in the world did you come to Las Vegas and be sports? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I was because I know Las Vegas is the hotbed of sports. In this well, country. it was it was a job <laughs> at, at the time. Uh, I was hired to cover UNLV's basketball team, the Running Rebels. Mm -hmm. That's what brought me to Las Vegas. That's why I was here. And at the time, the Las Vegas Motor Speedway was opening. Yes. At yes. the time, and I covered the opening of that, and I covered a lot of boxing and golf and uh, whatever else, uh, some base minor league baseball and minor league hockey and whatever else. My main beats were motorsports and uh, and Rebel basketball. And that's, uh, that's why I moved here. So uh, living in Vegas for a couple of years, and all of a sudden you became very interested in uh, various other things that were taking place in town. And then you became uh, kind of an all-around, uh, not only not necessarily yeah. a critic, but someone who you know, wrote about and made opinions about things, happenings going on. Yeah, everything house. that's happened to me has led to me doing an about, a Man About Town column. And I, right. I threw... You know, sports, and I became a feature writer. Then I was a columnist. You were with the Review an Journal. I was with, with RJ for two years, and I've been with The Sun since 1998. And that period with The Sun has been all feature writing or general interest writing or being an editor or being, you know, it more generally uh, uh, linked into the city. And uh, that is all through that. I was, I've done a lot of magazine writing, uh, all kinds of different things. And then, you know, through that evolution has become the column that I write now. And it's Which has brought you busy. some accolades and awards yeah, as well uh, for been, some um, of your my, writings. My, my best award is every other week when I get paid. <laughs> um, Just like we get yeah. here, right, Scott? They set, they, they, they <laughs> set a, uh, a little uh, award ceremony for me and announce my name every time. So oh, it never wonderful. gets old, baby. But um, well, yeah, so that's, it's a very gratifying uh, vocation, and it's a great place to do it. I love Las Vegas. Like you do. I mean, I, I am a big fan of Las Vegas, big proponent of the I city. I know you are. I know and you love the I, city. And when I write and do the other things, when Trish and I do the radio show, that is apparent, you know. I, that is um, is obvious that, that I have a very, very deep affection for Las Vegas and the people who live here. Well, I know you do, and I, and I love reading uh, your, I, I guess you call it, the Cats Report. Mm -hmm. yep. now, is that a daily article that it's you write? At least, or a couple you know, times a week? It's a it? recurring uh, online column, mm -hmm. uh, multimedia column, and it I write at least on average once a week, but there's no real set deadline for it. I just write on the fly as it, as it happens. You always and pick uh, very interesting subject matter, and I've mm -hmm. always been curious. Uh, 
do you pursue your own stories and search out things to write about, or, or does the paper come to you and say, John, we really want you to kind of focus on this I'm this week? primarily self-assigned, uh -huh. and uh, which is why, one reason I'm so busy is because I find so many interesting things to write about. Yeah, like you're uh, out about all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm out a lot. I'm, I'm out uh, in the city quite frequently, as you know. We see aye, each aye. other out That's a lot. Right. And, uh, you know, I write about what I find interesting in the city, and if I find it interesting, usually a typical reader will find it interesting. And some things are set up, it, obviously, like iHeartRadio was this weekend, and I was credentialed to cover that, so I covered the two so nights you, of that. So you just wrote about that yeah. today, correct? I did. I wrote about um, that all throughout the weekend. I posted two very long columns about it that were full of notes and, and photo galleries and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, sometimes you just uh, you are hit with something unexpected, like changes in the in the um, climate of Las Vegas that you write about too, breaking news. I do it all, you know, I do everything that I can possibly. I write from a radio show often, um, sure. interviews that we've done with, with, uh, with you, uh, I've written about, and uh, that becomes part of the column. Yeah, it's all there. Well, you, you, you educate our city as well. As an example, uh, you wrote something, I believe it was this morning as well, that I didn't know at all, uh, as an example of uh, uh, breaking news and things that, uh, like you, you mentioned, the evolution in Las Vegas, things come and go all the time. You were talking about uh, the new nightclub right. over at the Tropicana mm -hmm. called Nikki Beach. The new former nightclub. The new former yeah. nightclub. It's only been open for a couple months. What well, happened? what happened there, this is how my life works. <laughs> you know, this is... How'd you get wind of this so quick? I, well, I'm out a lot. Yes. And I hear stuff. I know a lot about the city because I, I live in it. I mean, I'm not just hanging around the office waiting for the next <laughs> phone call to right. somebody to tell me what's going on. I, I know what's You're going on. You're connected. I am connected. I've always got my head on a swivel. I'm always listening to people. Whoever wants to tell me what's going on in the city, I, I uh -huh. listen to them. And I process that information, and I pay attention. And uh, I, I had heard about uh, some changes that were happening at the at Nikki, at Nikki Beach and Club Nikki at Tropicana. I've been hearing it for a little while, some rumblings. It was this big company that came into Vegas, yes. took over this huge space. Based in Miami, and uh, they were part of the, uh, the uh, renovation, 165 to 170 yes. million, depending on the figure. Uh, renovation that they've uh, they've enacted at the Tropicana to remake the hotel and it's beautiful. They've done a beautiful job. It's gorgeous. There. It's, I mean, sure. especially compared to what it looked like before. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It, it was like um, you'd you'd have to go even. It was an upgrade to go to Circus Circus, you know, <laughs> from the Trop, which um, isn't saying a whole lot. It, well, you know, it was it was in dire need of a makeover. So they did this and they they brought in uh, Nikki Beach to to be the club operator, and um, and it just did not work. It wasn't working. And they, you know, through that whole, through this whole uh, involvement that I've had in, in visiting and knowing the people at the at the Trop and some of the people with the, with Nikki Beach, I'd heard that uh, on Friday people were being let go, and uh, wow. I was on property when I heard it. It wasn't, you know, what a shame because it's a gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's yeah. It's not. This is not a, a positive outcome. Believe me, you know, it's it's something that has the the, the hotel's going to take it over and they're going to make it work. But on the face of it, they, Nikki Beach was there for four months. And they were supposed to be there forever. That's not a long and time. For it's a not major a long time, nightclub. and that, so that's not that, that on the face. It, they need to work on this, for sure. And the club and the hotel is going to take it over. But you know, oh, I was over so there cool. yesterday. I was just in inside the hotel getting ready for iHeartRadio at the MGM Grand. I always park at the Trop. Here's a secret local. I park yes. at the Trop to yes. do stuff at MGM yes. Grand. I haven't been inside the MGM parking garage in at least right. ten years. Right. And I was over there, and I was in the sports book. Watching a little college football, decompressing, and before I was going to go over on assignment, and I started catching little tidbits. things started happening. Yeah, and were happening. So that's so that was a that was a column that I wrote that was not scheduled, not expected necessarily. Well, I'll tell you. Speaking but, of your column, you yes, have sir. a huge fan base for people that do read. Some I have of a which, very large family. Some of which, <laughs> and they may actually be in your family listening and watching right now that yeah. are in our live chat room. So. Would you mind taking a live question, sure. uh, if that's okay? Scott, right on me. do we have a question over there? We do. We have two, actually. The first one's from Bill. Bill wants to know, how much influence does a PR person have on the stories that you write? Um, how much that's an interesting in question. Yeah, that's a, I wonder if Bill works for an agency. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say that I can't really do my job very effectively without... Uh, Without PR reps, without PR agencies, love. they feed you little tidbits. Well, they they make they are often the conduit. Frequently, are the conduit between me and access between me and the individual. Uh -huh. They they help set it up, um, and a lot of times they are the spokesman or spokeswoman for the the organization or individual who I'm covering. And so um, when I sit when I talk about listening to people, I uh, that's an example as the PR agency or PR rep who is hired by the the subject to get to me 
I listen to them. I, you know, I talk to them before. If that, I don't know how much influence. It depends on the story. Is there know? a certain degree of appropriateness or some kind of a protocol you need to follow? Yeah. If you're going to write about a particular entertainer, as an example, do you have to go through their publicist? I, or their you know, the protocol or? usually usually uh, requires that you do deal with a PR rep before you deal with, a, uh -huh. with an entertainer. But if I see you on assignment and I say, when I'm out or whatever, right. Right. And, and I say, hey, why don't you, why don't you come on, cats of the dish? And uh, we can set that up, and we just do it. Um, that that will happen. And how much influence? I would like to say, uh, in, in the end result, um, minimal or negligible, because I'm going to go ahead and write what I'm going to write or cover what I'm going to cover anyway. But um, in the beginning, I do like to maintain a, a strong relationship with the people in that field. And uh, um, I can't, uh, you know, honestly, it's it'll be a, a far different world without them. You know. Well, let me ask you this. This. Uh Never thought about this really till this moment, but have you ever had any entities, be it establishments or entertainers, in some way or another, bribe you to persuade your opinion about them? Or wow, the, straight out, no, no, not yet. I hadn't thought of it either. That could be that could be a way to kind of. Well, I was just wondering. They're walking around money, right? <laughs> um, I have no. I think that I think I have never been straight out bribed for anything. If, if no. you read articles you've written about me, obviously I'm not bribing you much. <laughs> You should see what I don't write. Um, that's that's too too funny. Um, no, I haven't been. Uh, I haven't been like in the old days of radio. You know, they used to have payola. Sure, that's payola. what I'm wondering uh, if there's uh -huh. that factor no. involved. Well, there's well, one more question. Yet. If you don't, I'd love to hear what they have to say. <laughs> yes, my mom wants to know how much I have to pay. <laughs> uh, the Actually, usual. Tell her the usual. Gino wants to know how do you pro uh, prioritize stories when there is so much going on in town. Right. Good question, Gino. Um, yeah, there's not much going on in Vegas. Well, I tell. <laughs> <laughs> Dish and I were how do you about. narrow that down? Dish and I were talking about this this weekend about about how things get into publication in, in the face of a weekend like we had in Las Vegas this weekend. It's right. It's, it's overwhelming. It's it is overwhelming. Um, uh, the the answer is um, I have to use my own personal meter. To, to be where I'm supposed to be, you know, um, and I sometimes it's an easy call. This weekend was an example. iHeartRadio has got two solid nights of nine hours worth of music, Jay-Z, Lady Gaga, Kenny Chesney, Black Eyed Peas. That's a given. That's going to be a priority. A big fight, Mayweather, yeah. Yeah. Pacquiao, those guys, be there. UFC in town, going to be there. It's not as easy on weekends where there aren't those big events. And... Um, I, it, the, the short answer is that I have to use my own uh, sense of uh, judgment about what people want to read about in Las Vegas, whether they live here or not. And if, I'm, and if I'm going somewhere that's a little unusual, then I have to write it up in a way that explains uh, why I'm there and why you're interested in it. So, but Las Vegas is, is, you know, it is a city that um, will have a great deal of news value any time, sure. not just any night. Right. Any time. So um, I'm lucky that way because even if I go to uh, something that seems to be a little off the grid, have it's going to be Have a big you deal. found that over time and that your, uh, um, obviously your reputation precedes you, but does no, that, that help sucks, you? doesn't it? No, yeah, well. <laughs> does that help you gain access to certain individuals the, mm -hmm. the more you gain some validity with your name and your, yeah. the, the time in which you've been attacked? Uh, or, or is or is it through the paper that gains you access? Well, or it's, is it's it you personally? It's a it's a combination of all that. You know, uh -huh. it's it's the um, it's the track record and the the cash that you build up when uh, as and the equity you build up sure. as a, as an individual and as a professional that you build up over the course of time. And now I can tell you today, I'm in I'm fortunate that I'm in a position where I can get people to respond to me very quickly. Where it used to be mm -hmm. it's kind of like a teeth. while ago, it was. Yeah several days. I, I was on the phone. A good example is I'm working on a story about what happens here stays here. Right. It's going to be the cover of Las Vegas Weekly on Thursday. It's a very quick turnaround. For it to be a quick turnaround and, and, and work against that deadline, I have to get people to respond to me pretty quickly who are really important. Billy Vasiliadis of r and So you're doing Art. a cover story of Las Vegas. Yes, in, in the middle. I mean, I'm really busy. But it used to be that I would try and get a hold of somebody like Billy Vasiliadis and I'd have to wait three or four days to get a response. But they understand me. They understand what I'm doing. And I and I say you need answers if I, right now. I said if he, if he at all I know he's busy but if he can all spare ten minutes to give me time for this reason, they know who I am now. Right. They know right. what I'm doing. They know I'm not just throwing out a request blithely. Sure. And I did was able to do that. So that makes my job a lot easier. Yeah. And that that is forged through time and uh, and 
performance. Well, you you had mentioned that you have yourself a, uh, a radio show that's yes. on ninety one point five that you co-host with the very. Beautiful Trisha has charming. a radio show that I yes, uh, have Trisha the key McCone. to the studio. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a very short little break. All right. When we come back, we're going to bring Trish on. We're going to talk about the radio show. You're watching Talk Tales on Vegas Video Network. My name is Chris Phillips, and you are here with John Katz, everybody. We'll be right back. This is David Ivey from Pub Crawl. It's funny because is David from you should, you should, No, you should just leave it on. Hi, I'm David Ivey from Pub Crawl, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And scene. Well, 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 good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Vegas Video Network. I'm Chris Phillips, and you're watching Talk Tales. And I can tell you within the next 30 seconds, our viewership is going to double. And that is because we are sitting here... <laughs> With Double. one of the hottest mamas in town, she is also one of the more talented young ladies that graces the uh, streets here in Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Trisha McCrone. Wait, I grace, I grace the streets. The streets. <laughs> yes. Woo! What's the streets for money? Working. Yes, not in a working environment. But Gracie I want to know. Well, Gino, are you out there? Gino, will you ask me a question? I thought your name was cute. So <laughs> <laughs> call me. Well, we're so happy you could join us because uh, over the last several months, you guys have partnered up. Yes. And you do this incredibly successful, and, and, and I have to say, without question, one of my favorite radio programs on the air, uh, you two are, are fabulous co-hosts. You have a show called Cats with a Dish, yep. where you, uh, as in fact, uh, kind of like I, but on a much bigger level, you interview entertainers and other such people that make, uh, make up this city. And how did that get started? How do, you, how do you guys even know each other and said, you know, what would be such a great <laughs> idea? Let's do a radio show together. It was all my idea, actually. How did that happen? <laughs> well, see, Katz and I have been friends. Uh, we met, ex I, being a publicist myself, yeah. we met being, uh, during a story about Wayne Newton. Yep. And so in the, what, 98? It was, it was uh, 1999, I think, was the year that happened. It was either 98 or 99. I always forget. But it, was, yeah. it had to do with Wayne. I was and so we met kind of <laughs> on the phone. And then Cats mm -hmm. uh, on the Millennium spent the day with Wayne and all of us, the whole family. He spent the entire Millennium with us. New and so, new, yeah, so we mm -hmm. kind of uh, bonded at yeah. that moment. We've been friends ever since. And he had this wonderful show called His Millennium. What was it called? <laughs> <laughs> I had a show. I had a radio show. Is that myself. what you call it? Some people call it Johnson. Some people. It was. It's it was called, millennium. It's, and is called. It still exists. Our Metropolis is hosted um, by someone else now. Yeah. And I listened every I, single week. It was a Trisha great show. Never heard the show. Never. One of and, my best uh, friends never heard the so show. So we were out one night, and I had mentioned that I had this radio show. Yeah, apparently, it had been going on for years. It had I been had gone for at least three years. Paid much attention to it. <laughs> and so, being the dedicated three friend years. that I am, so we. Were, <laughs> so as a joke. We were at the Pepper Mill, mm -hmm. and I we're decided there seriously at the Pepper Mill. You, you, we need to host a show because I seriously think that you know because we have such different personalities. He's very dry sense of humor, very grounded, very you know intellectual, and I'm you know kind of a big hot mess a lot of the time. So we wow. balance each other out really well because I'm crazy energy and he's very calm. Yeah, and the the idea was first when this all started. I took this seriously. I did take it seriously when she made this comment because I thought this is crazy enough to work because of the way we talk to each other. And then we were at the Peppermint. The Mill. chemistry is perfect. Yeah, and, and and I thought, I, but there was no. Pro there was no co-host position in our metropolis. It was a 30-minute issues and affairs show. I'm, I was interviewing a lot of non-profits. And I heard issues and affairs, and, right, and right, I right. thought, oh, he's got yeah. issues. She's having affairs. That's so like, she that misunderstood kind of stuff. Like, the I entire didn't, premise I of the show. Yeah, yeah, like that better. Yeah, like if I would have known they were talking about people having affairs and having issues, yeah. I would have listened yeah. every week. But you know, that I, was sounds like my story. life right there. I was going to say it's the Chris Phillips story. The Zoe Boy program. Issues and affairs. So anyway, but I knew. So it started out. We had the idea of doing it as a podcast in the Las Vegas Sun for 30 minutes and we did a little bit of a test drive with it mm -hmm. and when we did the, t the test in our podcast room at the office I came out with the digital recording of it and I listened back to it after you left and I went over to our my boss Rob Curley the president of our division I said I've got something I think is gonna work really? I know you aren't gonna believe it when I tell you so I didn't even t really talk to him much about it and I said it's me and Trisha McCrone doing radio and he's like I love it and, and, wow. and from that point forward it became uh, 30 minutes maybe at KUNV where I already had a relationship. Then it was they heard us doing this, and then they said, we can't contain you guys in 30 minutes. We're going to make it an hour. <laughs> and you don't even have to have guests. You know, <laughs> you could just come in and just let it fly. And then we built 
uh, you know, through our various connections. We know a lot of people. We do collectively. Well, we came to show. And, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Trish, uh, you had in your past been a producer of yes. television mm -hmm. shows that we're all familiar with. Yes, Jenny Some Jones, which, Jenny Queen Jones. Latifah, yes. Tyra Banks, um, uh, Sharon Osbourne. That was basically I was a talk show producer for many, many years. And created a show for Wayne Newton for E. Helped create it, The Entertainer. You had mentioned Wayne Newton, and not only had you uh, helped him on the professional side of things by being his publicist for a while and producer for his show, but you were also his sister-in-law. And I still am. They're still married. So, you know, yes, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> At least they were. Yeah. I it's hope been almost 20 years, and I don't think anything's <laughs> going to change in that point. So, yes, yes. So, I'm very, very fortunate to be related to one of the most incredible men in the mm. world. Well, he is, him. without question, uh, an icon and a legend around here. And that's, and well, that's how we met, actually, was one of your you. first weeks yes. we, I, I, here performing. You did a, a, some sort of a show with Wayne, and that's right. when we became friends. When your first well, I think, as a lot of people know, one of the reasons I came to Las Vegas, my agenda and mission, was to be a Wayne Newton-type character in this town and keep that type of uh, essence and entertainment uh, going. And for me to know you and your family, obviously, has been one of the highlights of being in Las Vegas. Uh, so sweet. No, but it's true. But... So I know that out at uh, Wayne Newton's house, which is called Casa de Shenandoah, Ca Casa de Shenandoah. or Casa de Dish, when I'm yes. there by myself. Casa de you, <laughs> you, you live, in fact, I do. On, the, on the premises, do you not? What is that like living uh, in something that I could only describe as something like a, uh, Michael Jackson's Neverland or something like that, where you have animals and planes and things on the property, and it's almost as much a, an amusement park as it is a, a yeah. home. It's, it's, it's kind like? of interesting. I, I remember when uh, I'll be on the phone with someone, and they'll say, what is that squawking in the background? I'm like, oh, it's just a peacock in my backyard. <laughs> I mean, because we had, uh, Wayne is, uh, really has the most beautiful home. It's 56 acres in the middle of the city. It's in the heart yeah. of the city, and there's peacocks, penguins, um, wallabies, uh, sloths. I mean, you can just, all types of animals, monkeys. I mean, anything that you can imagine is pretty much there. So I'm, it, you don't really realize that you're in Las Vegas. It is so, everything's so green and beautiful. And of, of course, there's prize Arabian horses. There's 60 some prize Arabian horses. And a really neat thing is that it's going to be opening up for tours coming up That's at the end of the year. Wonderful. So everybody is yeah. so excited about these. So everyone's going to be able to see it. I, I, of course, have to, I'm staying in my house, so I have to stop laying out topless because <laughs> there's going to be tours <laughs> going out. So other than that, you know, I, I, well, I that's, my life will do it at night. I was going to say, that's the VIP admission. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you know, some lucky person. Well, we're so proud of you guys being able to put this thing together. Uh, is this something you've always wanted to do, is be part of uh, live radio or a talk show? Because you've always been kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. And now you're, you're you know, you're in you know what the funny front of the camera, in, in front of the microphone. In Are you high enjoying school, that? I was voted, believe it or not, crazy, um, most likely to uh, be famous and have her own talk show. <laughs> and it was a funny thing that I went into talk, but I always was behind the scenes. I did theater and acting, commercials and things like that growing up. But it really, I never, I don't think our little night eating at the pepper mill at three o'clock in the morning. I ever really believed that within a year the show would be on TV now and that things would have happened yeah. so fast. Yeah, I agree with that. We're on Vegas TV on, on Saturdays and Sundays now at four o'clock, oh, uh, channel great. 14. And um, it, is, it, it is, it's just like this little idea that it could go, I feel it could go wherever we want it to go. Is it's, there a, it's, so it's a ultimate lot goal more for the show? Would be. Is there somewhere you'd like to take it? Uh, um, like that would be great to have level. it syndicated on a national level. I think level. that would yeah. be cool. Yeah, it really would. Well, it I think it would be a lot of things have to happen for it to happen. But what I think right now, I'm just, for me, it's just focus on making it very good. You know, right now and make, oh, making I'm, it. I'm just focusing uh, on making myself, you know, the star, leaving them my desk. She's <laughs> focused on <laughs> the, the greater scheme. I'm like, I just want to get through next week. Yeah. But, well, it's um, a fun show to listen to. It's a fun show to watch. You're an amazing do. guest, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you are. Oh, I, I can't tell you how amazing you are. Yeah, you're one of the yeah. only people yeah. that we've had the repeat uh, guests. Speaking yeah. of guests, though, who. You've had, the stature of your guests is amazing. You had some big yeah. names. Who, who's somebody who sticks out to you guys? Marley been... stuck out. That... <laughs> she didn't show that one day. Yeah. I was... that for a different reason. I kid, of course. Yeah, she's, she, um, she's very 3D. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah. 2D, 3D, whatever yes. works. Rather buoyant um, young lady. Yeah, uh, I know. We had to pull out the wide no, but who, She is beautiful. And it was, no, that was fun. Um, we, had, we had Nick Cannon somebody? on. That was one oh, Nick Cannon. Uh, um, yeah. early on. Um, we had, we've had Holly Madison on. And, and I'm just thinking about it. It was kind of, we actually got a lot of a national attention for Nick Cannon yeah. because it was just prior to the birth of the babies and we there had just been a big incident with him and Chelsea Handler yeah, that um, it had just happened and so it turned out People Magazine
Magazine, Entertainment Weekly, E, all these people sort of picked up our. He's still married business. to Mariah Carey, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. But yeah, they, they were just they expecting just, their twins. Their twins had not been married. Yeah, it was so. just before he's that. Big time uh, host of yeah. America's Got America's Talent. Got now. Talent. Yeah. He's a lot big of time guest to have on there. Yeah, wow. he was he was important to us uh, early on. You know, he came in and people saw him in the studio and with us. And they're like, wow, That's you guys huge. are serious, huh? And uh, <laughs> so that, uh, Dana right. Carvey on the phone. Yeah, I have to say Dana Carvey was great because Chop and Broccoli, that scene, yeah, right. and SNL is one of my fa is my favorite SNL scene of all time. And he actually sang the song to me on the radio, so it was like that was a highlight for me. Dana Carvey was amazing, and of that course Wayne Newton was our first guest. Wayne so was on the first. Oh, my favorite, yeah. of course. Wayne, Wayne was was our first actual guest. Yeah. And we actually yeah. really had besides we love having you on because the best is that how much I know about you. And yet, every time I come on, you floor me with something <laughs> that I don't know about It's a new little tidbit you. of information. So, yeah, so, I mean, I, yes. I, the only time I've been literally uttered speechless on the show was... Well, there's very few people in Las Vegas that have a more torrid life than I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I and I, by the way, I love that. cocktail. This is awesome. This I love this setup. I know. It's really cool. I Are you having a week. cocktail? I am. I, I was one talk tail in while Katz was talking, actually. So. Well, i got to tell you something. I, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show this may be the first and only episode that we've ever done where I have not had a cocktail. You but I hate cocktail. to see you drink alone. <gasps> do the crown. The crown I, is going I down. Thank say, you. I just can't do it. The crown with a little water. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh, I, see, that what was I do is if I just water it down a little, I don't feel like quite the alcoholic that there I am. So. <laughs> Speaking of alcoholics, which are the only people that watch the show, <laughs> I, think, I think we have uh, somebody on, on the chat room who's wanting to ask you a question. Is it Gino? Well, as a matter of fact, it's not a question, but it is Gino. Oh, Gino! And Gino says, finally, a guest who is hotter than Chris. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, wow. Gino. Revealing. Wow. That's quite a demographic. Make sure and give Gino my number. You never, <laughs> a couple of these, you never know I'm exactly. going to Exactly. Call me, Gino. Oh, so I love that comment. Now, this may or may not be appropriate, but you've asked me, so I'm going to ask you. Are you currently involved with somebody? No, I'm no. not. I am 100% single. Now, Anybody is, out there? is there or has there or will there ever be sparks between you and your co-host, perhaps? Um, well, Kat, the weird thing about Katz, Katz was married when we met. That was in this town, thing. that's kind of a real. No, no, no. <laughs> to me, it means something. It does. So, um, I was but it, it's kind of that. I was in a five-year relationship with one of your producers mm -hmm. at um, Name That Tune, the amazing Doug Lefferman. Yeah, yeah. I love. Hello, awesome. shout out to yeah. Doug. He's amazing and so talented. Guy. And then I had kind of a hiccup of a uh, that I don't talk <laughs> about. And um, and Katz has been in. Um, Many relationships, <laughs> yeah. but I, I, we kind of were. I've been in a lot he, of We're like yeah. each other's yeah. go-to person. We talk all the time. We know too much about each other. We kind of, I think, might be a little bit of a disaster. I don't know. No, but I can tell you, become a best of friends. So which is yeah. huge. I, I don't know. It's, as you indicated, I'm kind of over in that in that uh, <laughs> ball game when it comes to relationships. Uh, but um, <laughs> is it possible to have a successful relationship in this city? Yeah. Yes. We so. just don't know how to do it. <laughs> I, just, I would say it's, it's easy to have that successful relationship, but it, don't, it doesn't always last that long. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, my, my schedule it dictates a lot of, uh, of my life. That's one. Well, one you both are very thing. social. You're very I social. I see you both out a lot. Mm, Let me ask both of you, if I may. I get asked this all the time, by the way. About the oh, I can imagine. I know. Everyone thinks that. No, people really? have come on the show and be like, aren't you two married? And yeah, we're like, that, mm, that does yeah. happen a lot. It's happened to me recently. It feels yeah. right. But you know, it's, it, which is great because people obviously that think that we have chemistry and you know, maybe there's something great. you folks would like to announce here. On, on. I like what Catherine Hicklin said about us one time. Our friend <laughs> Catherine uh, said to me, "She goes, you guys are like a married couple, but without the sex." And then I said to her, "Well, we're, that means we're like a married couple." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, why well, screw up a good thing? Exactly. Right? <laughs> right? That's, that's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. <laughs> I mean, if it ain't, yeah, yeah, there you go. I said it right. Uh, yeah, it is. Well, this said is it right that time. I've been kind of they, curious they about this. I've, I've known both of you for a long time. And like I said, I know you're both very social. You, you go out and about. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you mingle with the city. You love the various entertainment offerings that the city has. Uh, to give. If you guys were to go out, on a, say, on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night, who would you guys like to go see? What kind of shows do you like to see? Uh, do, you, do you like to see the shows? Do you like to see bands, entertainers, comedians? What, do you, what, do you, what would you do on a night off where you'd like to go out? Who, who do you guys go see? What do you guys do for fun? Take that dish. I have been hanging out at a, well, I'm, I'm good friends with, and this is no secret to anybody who follows me on Twitter, at Johnny Katz. Uh, <laughs> I, I like the Frankie Moreno band quite a bit, and I like yes. what Frankie does. Yes. I would go to um, wherever, someplace like where you guys are performing. 
Lon Bronson's or, uh, all-star band. I'm a big fan of his. Santa Fe and the Fat City Horns. So I'm a them. big fan of live entertainment that's yes. good. Yes. Right. Yes. And uh, it, that's what I'm, I gravitate to. And I count, you know, it's not just the kind of the under the radar. I'm, uh, people like Donnie and Marie put on a terrific show. Uh, Manilow does a great job. Yep. Uh, uh, we're going to see Elton John this week. Yeah, he's opening up again yeah. at the Coliseum. At the Coliseum. Good live entertainment with live music and real talent. Wherever, uh, wherever I can find it. I like to go back to name that tune until I can finally not get a Black name Sabbath that song. Tune. <laughs> oh my God! Can we talk about how I was completely robbed of ten thousand dollars? This is the only oh. woman I know, the only person I know right now who has a resentment against a song, <laughs> and it's Electric Funeral. I can't even remember the song. I'm Black blocking Sabbath. it out. I'm completely. It's Electric Funeral. I'm blocking it out Black because Sabbath. I believe it was a conspiracy against me by that DJ. He better not see me in a dark alley. That's all I have to say. That he <laughs> well, robbed me of my ten thousand dollars. Well, you know who picks the songs? Your ex-producer boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Doug. Oh, Joe really? Tunes, come on, Prince. I'm just being speaking honest. of Paola. Why didn't we work something out with him before we went in there? Okay, so we go on the show. I win. She wins the show. Hands you're, down, yeah, you're I won. Finalist. You're the finalist. I'm the finalist. It, Chris is there next to me. I'm breaking a sweat. I'm really into it. I mean, I am like I was a breaking kid a sweat Christmas. too because I got to talk to Marley. <laughs> anyway, and, and you're so by the way, sweet. I'd like to see that happen between you two. By the way, oh, that'd be, that'd be a good, good matchup. Whoa, eaten alive. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you might. Yeah, you would. She would <laughs> She'd eat kill alive. me. Yeah, she kill. But um, so here I am. I'm supposed to <laughs> win. To yes, you were. I, mean, well I did your, win. I did win. I was in the bonus win. round. You I were, beat out 50 yes. contestants to mm -hmm. win the whole show, which is a great show. You were playing. You were playing conquer the clock. You had 60 seconds to name 15 tunes. You were well on your way to winning ten thousand dollars. It was sitting there in front of me. And then you got screwed. I get by apparently my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was that she got locked up on a song. It was on the 1970 issue, Black Sabbath yeah. Paranoia. Oh, and That's I'm the sure album. everyone you, knew the song. And I'm tell, I know the album. I know this, and I and I have it. I own it. I, did you know I, it? I didn't. I knew no, that it was Black you Sabbath. No, did not know it. And I knew that you weren't going to get it. I knew that, it, yeah. that there was no way you had a frame of reference because I couldn't Adam figure Slug out the, the song. We had Adam on the show, and I was like, you could give me I'm 500. Sure. On our show, we had him on last week. I'm like, at least give me like a couple hundred bucks. Give me something to make me feel like I accomplished something. So I gave her a copy See? of Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> Go home and study. I, I have to say, it like is two something. Nights later, some, I mean, two I days later, take my game shows very, very seriously. And I mean, yes. we did Celebrity Family Feud, and Raven Simone and her family cheated and beat us. Cheated. Uh, I'm saying it right now. They cheated. But on this one, I do related? feel like it was a conspiracy. Her, Raven Simone's family cheated in Family Feud and beat How my did family. They cheat? They whispered. They like, they'd be like, ha ha. The answer is da 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 da. I saw it. That's cheating? That's cheating. You're not allowed to talk. I could have I could have helped my family, but I you didn't. I was playing talk? by the rules. Well, Trish, it, it seems like you had a lot of luck with uh, our, our rival prices right down the street. Never played the game. <laughs> Thank she's, you, Chris, for bringing that I've up. I've always said she's plinko horrific. <laughs> Or it's a range finder of a different <laughs> order. Oh. I, I have seen the show. <laughs> Love, lovely, about, lovely people. Talk lovely about people. cliffhangers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for hitting below the belt. That, that was good. Really? Thank You're you. Just glad to see me. That's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're the most fantastic. This is the first time I've seen Phillips in color, but man, he's red. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, we're going to bring up a nightmare for you right now. What do we got playing over there, this Scott? Electric TV. Ah, good. Tell me to hear it. It's Tony Iommi. Oh. I play left. Oh my God! I have to drown my sorrows right now. Yeah. I, thought it was, I, I thought it was Fairies Wear Boots, which is also on that album. I had yes. the key to ten thousand dollars around my neck. It was in. It was, Chris was standing next to me. I felt that he wanted me to win. I felt that he wanted me to win, and. Oh, well, it was a great experience. It was a great experience. Well, it was fun. I, I had the time of my life. I, it was a great experience having you on the show, and we thank you guys so much. But I, I want to ask really quick, pertaining to uh, what you were telling me really quickly about uh, entertainment in this town. We're running out of time, but I, I really want to get your quick opinion on this, because this is something I talk about pretty much every week with every guest we have on it. And that is the state of where Las Vegas is right now, pertaining specifically to live entertainment. As you guys know, over the years, just since you've been here, you've seen uh, kind of a decline in casino lounges in particular, going yes. with live music and going more towards DJs or more of the ultra lounge kind of environment. Is that a shame to you to see such 
incredible live talent going by the wayside in this town. How do you feel about that? Because there's very few, I know, I, I'm, very yeah, I'm few pretty, bastions. I'm like, pretty I'll, I'll revert to Lon Bronson, what he told yeah. us on the show. That, um, and there are a lot, of ba a lot of bad guys in this. But it, the lounge is, if they can't make money out of the lounge and, and quantify it, then you're not going to have live entertainment. Where it used to be that the lounge was a loss leader. The, the hotel would just subsidize whatever show was in the yes. lounge. And the only line that they cared about was if the hotel itself was making money at the end of the night. Right. And that's all they could. Now they're they're itemizing everything, and that that's and the right. lounges have suffered because of that. That's right. And I think that's too bad because uh, I'm I'm a big as I said before a big proponent of live entertainment, live musicians. And if there's a show that doesn't have live entertainment in it, a production show for example, and I and I'm happen to be reviewing it, I won't give it the top review, no matter how good it is if it has canned music. That's a half a star off, right off the top. I, I love the fact I think that it's you just terrible. said that. I think it's terrible because I think that as in Wayne's time, that those were the breeding grounds yes. for the talent to then go on to the big shows. Yes. And now it is the lounge acts have pretty much gone by the wayside. Yep. And so there is that where you learn how to handle everything and really hone your craft to go on to the big rooms. And I even think it's a shame with the big rooms. You can't go down and see... You know, I think a lot, it's so conglomerated, the city. This is just my opinion, I'm not speaking for anybody else, but that I, I feel that it's like people are just renting rooms and putting people in them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's not, if you, that is your hotel, you should get behind a, star, a celebrity, a star, a performer, an entertainer. Just doesn't Put your money into it as it did for, since Vegas. For decades. Yes, for decades. And all of a sudden it now it's so turned true. into, if you get someone to buy you right. a room, you can have a show. And I don't, I, I disagree with that. The, the hotels, and you know, um, are more like landlords now with their showrooms. Yeah. They're not, in, they're not developing entertainment and they're not, they're not promoting entertainment like they used to. They will bring in an entertainer and say, here you go, here's our room and you handle it. Here, yeah. You pay us this fee and, you, and the entertainers now are doing their own thing. And I think that's, it's very risky. And more often than not, we're seeing, especially in the South economy, it doesn't work. A lot yeah. of shows are closing. They're, they're good going. shows. Yes. Yeah, 10 years ago, the strip the, was a different place than it is today, unfortunately. Behind. Well, I'm glad to get your take on that because yeah. I totally agree with, with you folks. And, and people dress up when you go to a show, yeah. please. That's the other thing. Please <laughs> dress up. Don't go in your shorts and flip-flops. Boy, do you not like flip flops? Here, here. I love flip flops. I wear them she, all the time she, during the day, but I go out at night. Like, I wore Jimmy Choo's for Chris. I'll tell you one time, the only th one of the very, very few times she's ever been cross with me is when I showed up to a Mark Savard show after come, going to a 51s game. Yeah. Me and, me and Billy Johnson. <laughs> we had been to a baseball game. We showed up and I had flip flops on. And, and shorts the moment and a she saw me, she goes, Oh, thanks for dressing up, John. I'm like, Where's the. Are you going to put peanut chips on the ground on your way in or something? Dress up. It's I didn't Vegas. Put peanut chips that's my. That's what you know I, what I, I think. Put poker chips I think you two should get a show we should <laughs> we should have a thing where you a co-host oh we already oh uh, yeah speaking yeah. of can we come back next week i'll tell you what <laughs> i feel like we haven't even scratched i the like i like this show guys. can we come back next I week you like really? cocktails. i like cocktails can it be cocktails with cats in the dish well i'll tell you what speaking of cats with the dish i want everybody to tune in mm. i think it's on the weekends 91.5 fridays six o'clock and then uh saturdays uh i think at like seven o'clock on vegas tv and Is sundays four o'clock okay and of course if you know. can go to the las vegas sun and the read cats the cats report, report. Com and, the, and the show's there too and um. you can look me up on facebook if you're single and attractive <laughs> 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 i'm just kidding yeah. Gino! You know. <laughs> and the prerequisite is you cannot host a game show I love you. Ouch, and you can't like mm. Black Sabbath either. Thank you. I love you too, There's Chris. There's nothing Thank wrong you. with the Paranoid album. Nothing wrong. No. Well, here's the Black Sabbath and name that tune. Well, you guys, Cheers. thank you so much. Once again, you guys are watching Talk Tales on the Vegas Video Network. Once again, if you want to comment or write to us with any kind of questions, please go to Talk Tales at VegasVideoNetwork.com. I hope you've been having as much fun as we have with <laughs> two of the more lively guests that I dearly, dearly uh, revere as friends. Please come back. We'll we it. will. Anytime. Yeah, Anytime. next Monday. We're, we're yeah. free. Okay. Cats and Dish Part 2. So far, we're free. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys have a great night. Thank you so much Thank for coming. You, I wish you guys Congratulations all the luck in the world. on the show. Thank I love you it. so much, love you guys, it. as well. Hope you really take this wherever you want to take it. So, thanks again, everybody. I'm Chris Phillips. We'll see you next Monday. <laughs>